Hello, Sid Roth, your mentor of the supernatural, here with a Palestinian Arab raised as a Muslim. I mean, the last thing you would expect with what's going on in the world. I come from a Jewish background. And uh, Keith Taim, tell me about what your thinking was of the Jew in Israel as a young man. Well, I grew up hating the Jew because they uh, took our home, they threw us out of our land, and I've seen my father, who was very prosperous in Haifa, Israel, now hardly being able to provide for his family. And, and I, I, I hated the Jews. Okay, so your family went to the island of Cyprus. Yes. Uh, it got started over again. You must uh, have a pretty bright family because all of the children got scholarships to colleges in the United States. You went to the United States. You bump into a nice Christian student there, yes. uh, and she tells you about Jesus. Uh, and, of course, uh, you know, but, you, it, but that was okay. But the thing that was really upsetting was yes. miracles. Why miracles? Well, because it, it didn't make any sense to me. I, I was study, studying mathematics, uh, chemistry. In, in, the, in Islam, the Muslim uh, faith, of course, uh, Muhammad never uh, performed any miracle. So to us, miracles is, 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 is not a, uh, something that we right, understand. But she, right, she invited you to a tent meeting, an yes. evangelist. Yes. Why did you go? Well, I went because I believed this guy was a charlatan because I did not believe miracles actually happen in these days. When you walked into the uh, service, yes. uh, what did you see? What did you uh, think? Well, well uh, what, what caught my attention was it was more like a show. Yeah. Uh, they had the, the guitars and the stage and, and people, you know, praising the Lord. How, they, they don't do that no, in the mosque. No, no, no. <laughs> in, in, in Islam, it's more respectful. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we, we prostrate and, and uh, none of this. I'll tell you what, like Christianity on. can learn the reverence for God from Islam as well as, as from Judaism, because that's, that sometimes is, is missing. But go ahead. Yes. So, so to me, it was uh, entirely, you know, I mean, it was, it was very different. But, uh, and then he started talking about miracles. Uh, and, and, and he walked up to, uh, to a person who was on a, on a wheelchair, and he said he was going to pray for him, and the person was going to get out of the wheelchair. So, what well, did the person get out of the wheelchair? Well, well, he did get out of the wheelchair. So you saw a miracle. Well, I don't know. What no, do you mean you don't know? Well, I didn't know the person was not part of the show. Oh, you thought it was a yeah, fake. Of course, of course. I, I, how do I know? I mean, and then he prays for a lady who uh, who was blind, and then, uh, and it seemed orchestrated to me. I mean, I, you know, all of a sudden now she sees, so she's praising the Lord, and everyone stands up and starts praising the Lord. So. It did not impress me at all. Now, what impressed me was a child, about seven years old. And this child was not too far from me, maybe a few seats down. And one of his legs was shorter than the other one. And it was in a brace, uh, a leather brace of mm -hmm. some sort. And it, was, um, it wasn't it was even straight. And, and it was withered. You know, I've mm -hmm. seen him as they pulled him in front of me. So it was thinner than the other leg? Yes. Th thinner, crooked, and shorter. Okay. And, and, and the gentleman, the, the minister, asks that they bring him to the stage, and he was going to pray for him, mm -hmm. and that God would heal him. And something interesting he says. He says, those of you who do not believe in miracles, he said, come on the stage, and you will see something. And I'll tell you what, I figured that was my opportunity. And I jumped. I went to the stage. You, you, you have uh, what we Jewish people call chutzpah. It means nerve. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I felt he had nerve to be so, ah. so presumptuous. So, uh, I mean, how, how could he get away with something so like this? So what did you see? Well, that's amazing what I've seen. He set the, the child in front of him on a chair. And he sat opposite to him. And he put the child's legs in his hand. He took the brace off. And, he's, and, as, and what I did is I sat on the side because I wanted to see the, mm -hmm. the view, the lengthening. And as he started to pray, he said, in the name of Jesus, that leg began to grow, and it started growing until it reached the same length as the other one and stopped. 
Matter of fact, for a second there, I was wondering if it was going to grow longer than the other one. And that I could not deny. And then it, it, it went like, it just filled out. It like expanded? Yes. Did you see this with your I eyes? Saw it, I didn't hear the poop. I saw it with my eyes. I'm right there. It just goes li like, like putting air like in a the balloon. balloon. <laughs> yes. Yes. And the child, what's amazing is the child stood up and he couldn't step on it. It's, it's like he had a new leg. He had to be trained. It took him a few minutes to realize he can actually step on that leg. Obviously, he never has. And then in five, ten minutes, he's walking and running around the tent. That I could not deny. So you became a believer in Jesus. How did your family react? Oh, oh. It, it's anathema. It, it, something like this does not happen. And I was, uh, uh, they disowned me. Uh, they asked my brother, who was a student with me, uh, to talk me out of it. And he tried on several occasions. He said, okay, you know, you had fun with this. Dad's upset because he was paying all my bills, you know. And he said, we want you to come back to, 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 to your faith. But I could not do it. So they did disowned they, me. Did they really spit on you? Well... This is hard because I, I don't want to uh, put that down. But it's, it's tradition to do that. They, they have to spit on you because that's how you're disowned. So, so you were in turmoil, weren't you? Yes. And uh, you can understand why he was in such turmoil. His, his father literally had to spit on him. He had to disown him. And so he didn't fast. He just had no desire to eat. And he went over 40 days without eating. And then he ran out of water. And then the miracle happened to him. I'll tell you about it when I come back. Don't go away. I know you're going to be here. Hello, Sid Roth, your mentor of the supernatural. I know you were not going away. Akif Taim, a Palestinian Arab raised as an Islam, saw a genuine miracle. He could not deny it. And he receives Jesus. His family literally spits on him, disowns him. The same type of thing that happens in a Jewish home. So I can really relate to that. Uh, and then he, he's so distraught. He doesn't know what to do. And so he can't eat. He goes over 40 days without eating. And he finds himself in the woods. He's dehydrated. There is no water. And did you pray to God for rain? Yes, yes. Um, uh, I was so thirsty and uh, I was so weak. Did it look like it would rain? No, no. There, there wasn't a, a trace. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. Um, and, and I was so weak that I couldn't walk. To, to the church to, 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 to get water or anything. Right, you, you told me yes. that your, your, your skin began to crack. Well, I used to uh, read the Bible loud because I was in the, in the forest, in the, the wood for so long by myself, and I just liked to hear the echo. And therefore, after a while, I could not read the, the, the Bible loud because moving my lips would would cut them and I would feel blood because I was so dehydrated. My fingers, when I went like this, they would crack because of the, of the de dehydration. So you, you prayed for a miracle, for rain? I prayed for rain. I, 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 I thought maybe I took this further than it should have gone. I never intended it. I never intended to fast 40 days. I never intended it to get this the, the, as far as it went. And I, I asked and I prayed for God to send rain. Now explain to me, you began to slip out of your body? Well, what happened is I was, there was a, like a, a rock, a white rock that mm -hmm. I was leaning on. And I was, uh, I had the Bible next to me, of course. And then what happened is I started like I was passing out, I would see light and then it'd be darkness, light and darkness. And, so, and then the trees, it's like the sky and the trees would, would, would rotate. I think I was just uh, passing out of some sort. Next thing I know is I'm, I'm standing about 10 feet or so. 
and I'm looking down at this rock, and I'm looking down at this individual that I did not recognize. I haven't seen myself in a mirror. There's no mirror. Around. You're looking at yourself, and you don't know it's no, you. I what did not. you see? I felt I felt sorry for this person. I've seen I've seen a very weak uh, person. I mean, I, I, skin and bones. Hmm. I've seen blood. There was blood by his mouth. There was he was cut different places and, and 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 there was a hollowness in his eyes and 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 I was wondering who on earth that person was I did not recognize it was me and then what happened the, the next thing I know is I started moving up towards the sky and it's amazing with all these things that happened in my family that the only issue that I was concerned about, and I rem later on I was I look, looking back, I was wondering why it was like this. But anyway, I kept on trying to touch myself, but I couldn't. There was no... I, it, it, your fingers would go through your yes, flesh. Yes, yes, and I, and I kept on telling myself, why? Where's my flesh? What, what's going on? I was fascinated. But anyway, then I, I was going up, and then uh, I passed the... Uh, a lit area, a light, but I didn't stop, and I, I went through, then there was darkness again, then there was a lit area, and then there was darkness again, and in the third lit area, I stopped, and it was as if I was standing on, on cotton, uh, and I realized that the reason I'm not going down is because I have no weight of some sort, it, it, you know, and I was, as I was standing there, I seen a form of a man about 10 feet or so away. It starts taking shape. And it's amazing because I knew, no one told me, I knew without any doubt that it was Jesus Christ. Hmm. And as that form was completed, and I don't know the color of his eyes, I don't know the color of the skin, all I know is that like a silhouette. It was long hair, like a robe, and he started approaching me. About an arm's length away from me, he stopped, and he said, touch me. And I reached out with my right hand to his ribcage. And I remember when I got close, I went inside his chest, maybe like, and the minute I touched him, I was back on the rock, and it was pouring rain. It was pouring rain. What was your first thought? The first thought, you're in your body, it's pouring rain. You've just prayed to God for a miracle. He's, there's not a cloud in the sky, and it's pouring rain. You've just gone to the third heaven. You've just encountered Jesus. What? But you're, you're so weak, you probably can't even move. I danced my way back to the... Wait, well, yeah, you were I so ingratiated. Forty days, you can't. I danced you my can't. way back. You can't. Akif, you can't. I've seen the power of God. I've seen the power of creation. I've touched the Lamb of God. It's the only thing I know because I could not take one step before this. Okay. They found out about it, invited you in a Baptist church that doesn't believe in miracles yes. to speak about what happened to you. W tell me about that. Well, it, it, of course I didn't know. And thank God I didn't know about what the Baptists believe, what they don't believe. It's immaterial mm -hmm. to me. But, but I, I, I spoke. The only thing I knew, like the you know, I was blind and now I see. I, I just related to them what just happened to me. And, and uh, there was a, a gentleman, a deacon, who's been in the church for like 20, 30 some years. And he was in a wheelchair. And, and it's amazing. Uh, he started coming towards the front. It, like he wanted to, 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 to touch me or talk to me or something like that. And, and I noticed that my right hand would get was getting warm and His hot. His right hand was on fire. Guess what happened? We'll be back right after this.